Hey everybody, it's uh, been quite some time since uh, my last video. Um, wow, it's been, I don't know, let's take a look how long ago it was. That was this presentations video. Um, and that was, whoa, uh, a few months ago. Um, so, uh, yeah, so uh, basically, uh, sorry, it's been a long time. It's been a really busy semester. Um, I'm teaching more classes. I'm teaching an additional class this semester, two different subjects, um, which is really... Um, uh, taken up a lot of time or two different subject levels um, during the fall I have to do a lot of school visitations to tell them about the awesome program that we're building for Hunter CS um, I'm doing a lot of new things with that program uh, lo lots of busy things happening so um, sorry have not really been able to make videos uh, also I've been kind of shy on ideas for videos but I've got a couple now um, so um, you know I, I think it'll still be probably pretty sparse until um, you know until closer to uh, December um, you know when it gets to the um, the end of this semester and the spring semester I have a little bit more time um, but anyway hey I'm back at least for this one so I hope you guys enjoy it um, so what I thought I would talk about today is um, it's a little bit about org mode and I'm not going to do an org mode tutorial um, there are org mode tutorials out there um, I'm just going to get a few highlights in you know kind of, kind of like what my day-to-day -day is like with org mode and how I use it um, and um, you know I'm not going to go too much into the configuration um, with org mode um, because I've done some of that before um, but I will go like if I do Emacs if I load Emacs here you know with no particular configuration just a vanilla uh, vanilla Emacs here um, You know, the idea that, you know, org mode, you can move things around, you can do, you know, you can do the tables, um, you know, you can move, you know, so you can do all these cool things with it. Um, and I've made some customizations to make it look better, like here's my configuration, so you see we've got these bullets here which look kind of nicer, and of course I'm using a theme, um, you know, and, and so, but, but still at its core you get Emacs right off the bat, and as I show you things, I will, actually right, I can't do Y or N because I'm in vanilla Emacs where it's just yes or no, so, uh, yes, let's take it anyway, um, so, um, I'll show you a little bit of the configuration, but I won't go through the details because you can go back to the other videos, um, or you can go to um, the config file and get it. So just look at some of this. Um, one of the things we're doing here is um, you know, setting up the browser, uh, org bullets, which gives us those nice bullets as, a pro as opposed to um, just the asterisks. Uh, somewhere in here, the hide the leading stars right over here, so you're not going to see, it's just going to look like an indented type situation. Um, you know, I want when I start it up, I want to look at everything folded, just the overview, um, things like that. Um, the applications that I'm using for uh, the browser to look at a PDF file or the, uh, the web browser I'm using. Um, I bind this to my agenda, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, this is my agenda view, my custom agenda view, which we'll talk about. This is an, these are important parts here. Um, these are the agenda files that I'm using, so org gcal. I did a video before on using um, the Google Calendar and pulling information from that. Um, and we'll see a little bit of that uh, when I use it later. Um, but that's a file that I'm using for my, um, that says that's an agenda file. That file that's being populated um, from somewhere, pull that in when I list my agenda, when I'm listing my schedule. Uh, this is for Hunter School of Education calendar. This is my main org file. And schedule.org is actually older stuff that I'm not using. And then I've got these templates here uh, for capturing. And I've done a couple of videos, if you go back, a couple of blog posts and videos on capturing with org mode. And um, I'll, I'll show these I'll show you in my day to day, but these are the capture templates that I use. Um, and I also go over these things over here um, in those older videos. So I'm not going to talk about them here. Uh, so 
Org mode in Emacs is of course amazingly, amazingly powerful and it can do everything and anything. And so I'm just going to show, this, this is going to be the demo part of this. So let me go to um, Dropbox, Word Files, Demos, and let's look at the little, I don't even know what I have in here. Let's look at the Babel demo. Yeah, sure. Um, so, you know, I use this to demo org files. So you see that we can have embedded LaTeX, which is cool. This won't work. You have, you have code blocks. So if I had installed MongoDB, um, I could do a Mongo thing from within here, a MongoDB thing. This is a Python code block. This one I can run. So if I do, let me just change this so you can see what's going on here. Um, so if I do Control C, Control C, evaluate on the system, and you'll see we have the results over here. If I change this to 35 cc, yes, it changes the results. So I can actually, you know, it's kind of like, um, what are they called again? Um, those uh, notebooks, uh, Jupyter Notebooks, yes, uh, for Python, but it can also do things in other languages. You can also run things like DITAA. So I have this, I've installed DITAA, this little ASCII art, which gives me this result. Or, um, you know, if you use DIGRAPH, um, you know, dot, program to make graphs, you can get this result. Um, you can have links, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, you know, here, um, this is another Python block. I mean, let me just change this to 13. But this block here is calling the function up above, which is kind of cool. So you can have separate stuff. I don't know if this will run because I don't know if I have Java installed on this machine. Uh, yeah, I haven't installed Java here because I'm not, you know, I'm not teaching Java now. But you can use Java and C and C++ and all these other cool things. Um, new plot. Again, I don't know if it installed, so this was a run earlier. Um, you know, this table view where, you know, you can you know, move things around, etc. Um, this I actually been using. So we've been playing board games uh, in the family, and so I, I track my board games. And so when we do another game, you know, I just, uh, you know, I can put the date of it here um, in my table, and then I can run these, and you'll notice here, I just had a 15th in here, and then if I run this formula, I now have 51. And I'll just um, get rid of that. And bring that back. Um, so you can use, you can actually have like the spreadsheet going on here, which is really, really cool. Let me get out of this one. And I'll save it. Um, you know, more tables. So this is just a little demo. Um, you know, you can do things like Control C E. I can export this to the tech. Uh, again, a lot of these code blocks aren't going to run because. Um, I don't have the programs installed, but now you get this LaTeX file, you know, this uh, LaTeX files PDF, and the Python stuff runs, and all of that looks really cool and all. Or I can do, you know, export it to HTML, and I actually showed how I use this. Um, you know, so same thing here, really nice. I mean, I know it's not fancy and all, um, and I showed this, like I showed how I use. Um, in the capture um, videos, in the capture episodes, I showed how um, I save bookmarks in a file. Well, let's get out of here. I just want to kill that. Uh, this is my main org file, but I have links.org, and um, I showed in that video how I do, um, how I can save my links in this file, my bookmarks. And then I can export it to a web page, and then I can bookmark this web page, and I get my bookmarks. So this is a pretty cool thing. Um, so these are all really cool things, and uh, uh, org mode can you do tracking, and it can you know uh, for habit tracking, for deadlines, and it does all these things. Um, I do. Um, uh, presentations in org mode. Uh, so I've decided that I'm going to put all my presentations up here. So this is a presentation that I did for um, uh, at the CSTA conference last summer. And this is a presentation that I use when talking to high schoolers. And I tell them all about uh, one, um, I have this whole talk about things that you should consider um, 
to navigate from high school to college and tech. Things like, do you, should you get a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Science? Uh, things about majoring versus minoring, the, all sorts of things. Um, and I wrote these presentations using, um, using org mode and expect, uh, exporting it to reveal.js. So with all this power, um, I kind of feel like, um, you know, I was always like a, a calculator wonk, and so I had the HP 41 The HP 41, uh, well, I had the HP 41 originally, this guy here, um, and then I had, I think it was the 48. There's some glare on my screen, so I can't see. Uh, yeah, then I got the HP 48 later on, and I always loved these really powerful programmable calculators, and I had a lot of friends who were engineers who would use calculator, whatever, they had these super fancy calculators, and whenever I talked to them about what they would do on their calculators, they'd always be like, um, well, I do plus, minus, multiplication, and division. So they got these really super high-end tools, but for the day-to-day, -day, they just do the basics. And that's really what I do with, 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 um, um, with org mode. So whenever I, I open up the day, I usually I start out and I bring up this file, and it's i.org for index.org, uh, you know, a single file. And um, it's just, uh, this is where I do all my stuff. This is one file where I keep everything. And so, um, so what I do is I keep my to-dos and notes up here. I don't have a lot here, and I can open it up, and uh, that's done. I usually don't. Um, that call is done, so I'm going to get rid of that. Ah, kill it. Okay. Um, that call is done. I have to do this paperwork. I have to deal with, you know, these are things that I have to um, deal with. Um, and down here I have a note space, which I have run long-term notes and to-dos, uh, things that I have to deal with, but they're not as long or to-dos. And you see I have a, a to-do over here, which is not really a to-do, it's really a note. Um, I just have it here as, um, I don't know why I have it as a to-do actually, but there's no date associated with it. Whereas here I've got a date associated um, with this to-do. Um, and you know, I do move things around. I sometimes will just throw something like here, um, uh, Jordan uh, Cochet was, uh, gave a talk at Catskills Comp on digital terroir. It's really cool. I'm planning to write a blog post about it. So I just have a couple of links here um, just to store that information. And very frequently I'll just like write some temporary note that I have to deal with today or now. And I'll just have it as, a, as an org heading. And you know, then when the urgency passes or whatever, I'll just move it down lower here, and or move it, you know, just so that my two dos are up top. Uh, and then when I'm done, I'll just kill it. And in fact, you know, normally when I deal with to dos, like what you're supposed to do, like more to do items, you know, um, and to do items. So if I have a to do here, something, you know, I'm supposed to do, you know, I'm supposed to cycle it like that. Or if you note here, I have a note to done. Uh, but I usually um, I just I just usually delete it, or or what I'll also do is I will also exp um, archive these sometimes. So C X A, and you'll see it archived it to I misspelled it, but archive i .org. So notice that here I no longer have an item here, but if I go to arc chive.org, which I never spelled right, um, somewhere in here, oh, I guess this was it, um, it's going to have the archived item, and so I can keep it in a, I can move things in a separate file that I really want to keep track of. So that's actually the core, get rid of that. That don't need it. Um, that's really the core of I, of what I will do. You know, and sometimes I'll put a table in for stuff. You know, like um, like when I'm putting something together, I'll, I'll just start by putting in you know one two. You know, I'll start building a table. Um, or sometimes I'll do more fancy things. But this is really like 60, 70 percent. You know, just stuff that I have to do on the day to day. Now I'm going to show you a couple more things um, in a minute. But another, the other thing that I do day all the time is. I also do my lessons in here. So what I'll typically do with my lessons is um, I will just do it as a um, you know one per lesson, 
And when I'm planning out a lesson, and I don't necessarily have a lot of notes here. These are the notes for tomorrow's lesson, so it's nothing fancy. Um, I might have a lesson that actually has code in it. Um, you know, so I'll use those code blocks in, in a Word file. But what I'll typically do is I'll just, and I know I can do this more efficiently, I'll just narrow to the lesson, and then I'll do a LaTeX export, I'll print it out, and that's my lesson plan, and then I'll unnarrow it. Um, you know, so this is my typical lesson planning part of this. Um, I'll sometimes make something that should be a web page. I'll export it to a web page. But again, really simple stuff. None of the fancy things. Um, but the other thing that I do all the time is capture. So, for example, let's say I'm reading my email here. Um, and so I have this email by Mike Zemanski, uh, which is me, which I sent to me from another account. Um, what I'll do is I set up a capture template. And I'm going to make this a mail to do. And uh, this is some stuff on the mail. And then I'll save it. And I'm just going to get rid of this. I'm going to archive that email. And um, I think that goes to, I don't remember. I've been playing around with this. I'm going to the bottom here. Yeah, this goes down to these to do's. I have to change it because I was just doing to do's before. And I'm in the middle of changing to do's and my note space to the long-term notes and the to-dos and notes up here. So I haven't finished that yet. So for now, it exports down to here. And I want to change my um, capture template so that it doesn't leave me on the next line because I found in practice I'm just using the one line. But then from the capture, I can come right back to the email message, which is really cool. So I also do that, and I showed this before. Um, another thing I do is if I'm here, like here's another email, and I can do this with any link. I'll do a capture, and in this case, I'll do a capture for a, uh, well, I didn't want to do a mail to do. Um, let me get rid of these. Uh, a Gmail to do, and uh, I have to, unfortunately, mark that, replace it. I know there are better ways of doing this. Uh, you know, I'll just put like a little label on it. Uh, you know, that's, whoops, control C O. And it brings up that message. Um, I will also do, you know, I, sh uh, I show links in the other video, but I'll also do like a, if I want to save a blog idea, uh, and I get, I've been messing around with this. So let's see where that is. Uh, like some blog idea. And let's look for some blog idea. Okay, blog topic. So again, I've been changing things around. I'm just going to get rid of all these, and I'll probably remember to change it all after the video. But I've been changing around so that blog ideas is now posts where I'm keeping my blog ideas. So I, I just have to change my capture templates. Um, so here. So I have to change this to look for, instead of um, looking at blog topics, I would look for posts, for example, and I'll, I'll load this later. But I use that a lot as well, where I'm just saving notes and things, uh, where I have an idea, and I'm like, oh, I just want to make a note of that. So I'll, I'll sometimes do the Control-C, Control-C, and then save it as a capture template. Uh, or sometimes I'll just, you know, I'll, you know, I'll be here, you know, I'll just add it in. So that's actually really most of uh, most of what I do from the day to day is, you know, I'll do these capturing of notes, and I just you know, I just use the very basics. You know, the, the very basic stuff that is is not you know that that's just um, plus minus multiplication and division, but for org mode. Um, you know, I can't think of too much else. The email links, uh, you know, the notes and stuff. Um, I showed the lesson planning things. So it's really amazing that you don't really need a whole lot, um, and yet you can be very, very efficient and productive. Um, now what I also do is I used to store this, or I'm currently storing this on Dropbox. I'm currently moving this over to SyncThing. So um, um, I set up SyncThing on my machines, and I also like having it on a digital ocean box. Oh, the other thing that I want to show is the agenda I use a lot. So if I do Control C A which brings up agenda view, and I bound this in my config. It's not a default config. Um, this brings up 
the agenda, um, and yeah, I should say that. Uh, and this is my agenda view of things to do. So you'll see that it's yeah. Um, you know, this was a meeting that I had off my Google Calendar. This is off the School of Education Calendar, etc. Um, but I can also my custom one, which also has here. These are not you know these are the to dos without dates. Uh, you know, so some of the things have time rather on the bottom. Yeah, here these are the ones with uh, actually do they have these? Oh, okay. So yeah, these are the ones without dates. So I have my notes and stuff here. Um, but I use this a lot. To, um, you know, for my agenda, I use this in conjunction with Google Calendar. Um, so that's pretty much all I'm going to talk about today. Um, you know, I've rambled on for quite some time now, longer than my usual videos. Um, what I want to show you next time is um, I actually mail myself the agenda every morning, and I have this set up um, by having one of my machines send out an email with it, um, grabbing it from word mode and then sending out an email. Um, again, I'm not gonna show all the details with that because it does involve setting up a DigitalOcean box and Dropbox or same thing, but I'll give you a few pointers on it. Um, but in the meantime, I hope you found this uh, useful or interesting um, as the way that I use my, I use Emacs and org mode in particular on the day to day. Um, that's it for now and um, yeah, I hope you enjoy. Okay, bye-bye.